Greetings, professors. Before we begin, I wanted to thank the sponsor for today's video, Exter. Exter designs beautiful smart wallets, laptop sleeves, and other accessories. And not only are their products high quality and functional, they're also made out of sustainable materials like vegan leather. I've actually been using the Exter laptop sleeve for the past month, and I really like how it has so many pockets, so I can basically fit everything I need in here. Like obviously I can fit my laptop, but also my phone, my wallet, my charger. And so this has basically doubled as like a bag of sorts and I just bring this out whenever I need to head to the cafe or library to get some work done. I actually also gave my dad the extra parliament wallet for Father's Day and he has been absolutely loving it. I really like my extra wallet. I think it looks sleek, feels really compact and the design makes finding my cards so much easier. And speaking of Father's Day, Exter is actually currently having a Father's Day sale. So if you'd like to make your dad as happy as mine, or if you'd just like to try out one of Exter's amazing products yourself, then be sure to head over to their website. They're currently offering up to 20% discounts site-wide, or up to 30% discounts plus a free gift bag for all purchases $150 or above. So huge thanks to Exter for supporting my channel, and without further ado, let's jump right back into the video. Concepts are a, well, concept that every K-pop fan is familiar with. Whether it's cute, elegant, mystical, girl crush, or dark, a concept dictates the look and feel of every K-pop production and is essential in defining an artist's creative direction and identity. Over the years, different concepts have fallen in and out of popularity, and most artists would try to adapt to or incorporate trending concepts in their music to keep up with the times. But as the K-pop industry becomes more saturated, there are an increasing number of artists who have decided to take the unconventional route and attempt to stand out from the crowd by taking on bizarre and sometimes outrageous concepts. In this series, we will be exploring some of the most bizarre groups to ever exist in the history of K-pop. So brace yourselves, because you're watching Crazy K-Pop Concepts. It's honestly difficult to even describe the concept for today's group, Six Bomb. From dressing in sausage-like costumes, to getting plastic surgery as the concept for their comeback, to parodying Japanese porn, Six Bomb were a group that were seemingly willing to go to whatever length necessary just to hold on to their 15 minutes of fame. But whilst the group is best remembered today for their controversial concepts and outrage marketing tactics, believe it or not, things weren't always like this, and they actually started off quite the opposite. So let's rewind all the way back to the beginning of this scandalous group's career. Six Bomb were actually formed all the way back in summer of 2010 and consisted of members Soa, Navi, Uhyun, Jiwoo, Subin, and Soomin. Even before their debut, the group already started gaining some attention thanks to rapper Soa's resemblance to Wonder Girl Sohi, as well as the fact that Subin was supposedly a friend of Girls Generation's Yuna. However, the girls weren't interested in gaining fame for their looks or their connections. They wanted to impress with their talents instead. The name Six Bomb was apparently chosen to showcase the group's powerful image and vocals. And in a pre-debut interview, the girls said, We didn't come out here trying to triumph everyone else with our looks. We want to shake the industry with our talents. We would just rather the focus of our success be put on our music. Pretty ironic considering what happens later. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. After about a year and a half of training, Six Bomb finally made their debut in January of 2012 with the song Chicky Chicky Bomb. Oh, 
However, right from the start, the group ran into numerous troubles. Member Suman reportedly fell down a flight of stairs and injured her legs right before the debut, so she ended up having to drop out of the group before debut promotions even began, and was eventually replaced by a new member, Ji Young. Additionally, the debut failed to live up to the hype, with many complaining that the song and music video felt cheap, and the line distributions and dance formations were off, which I guess is to be expected considering the sudden member change. But all in all, I think it's safe to say that Six Bomb's debut basically bombed. And by 2013, all the members aside from SOA had left the group, and their company, Jang Entertainment, had gone bankrupt. And so it seemed to everyone like Six Bomb was yet another short-lived K-pop girl group that had disbanded due to the lack of popularity and funds. But much to everybody's surprise, after more than two years in hiatus, it was suddenly announced that Six Bomb would be re-debuting under a new company, Pacemaker Entertainment. The group also had a new lineup consisting of original member Soa, along with new members Dian, Yu Chung, and Hanbit. And fun fact, Dian had previously been part of a group called ZZ Best alongside Brave Girls Min Young. The new Six Bomb lineup finally came back with the song Step To Me on May 12, 2015. However, this song also faced criticism for being low budget and low quality. It seemed their company, Pacemaker Entertainment, was also struggling financially, as they didn't even have the funds to film a music video for this comeback. Additionally, the members were also dressed in cheap outfits consisting of mismatched neon shirts and tights. The tights were often so low quality that they were basically see-through, and the group actually got into a controversy when during one performance, they wore neon green tights that exposed their black underwear. Fan cams of this performance were shared on forums such as Gasengi.com, and Six Bomb soon gained the nickname of the group with the super embarrassing outfits. Now obviously, most of this attention was negative, but it was the most publicity that Six Bomb had ever received throughout the entire career so far. And this seemed to be when Six Bomb and their company had an epiphany or an awakening of sorts. I mean, the company was desperately in need of funds, and I guess they realized that the quickest and easiest way to get Six Bomb's name out there was to resort to controversy and outrage marketing. So they decided to completely overhaul Six Bomb's original concept. Gone were the days of trying to shape the industry with their talents. Gone were the dreams of trying to, you know, focus on their music. They were gonna fully embrace their controversial image as the group with the super and embarrassing outfits, and boy did they live up to that name. On the 16th of February 2016, Six Bomb made their comeback with the song Wait 10 Years Baby. This was the group's first song to gain mainstream attention, getting over 4 million views in a matter of days. Though this wasn't due to the song itself or the members' talent, but rather the atrocious pink latex bodysuits that the group wore throughout the music video. I mean, it honestly looks like something straight out of the dark web. The bodysuits were reportedly purchased in America and costed the company several hundred thousand won. Nani? But I guess the investment paid off, because Six Bomb instantly began trending across the internet. Natizens compared them to various, well, less than stellar looking foods such as raw chicken and sausages. TV stations across Korea rushed to ban the outfits from their music shows, and the group faced tons of criticism for their supposedly sexually explicit and inappropriate concept. Which, to be honest, I never understood because I don't find anything sexy about a bunch of sausages dancing on screen. 
but different strokes for different folks, I guess. People also criticized the quality of the comeback itself, with many commenting that the song sounded bad and the members singing and dancing were lackluster. As if all of this wasn't enough, it was also around this time that netizens discovered that member Hanbit had previously appeared in a 19 plus movie before joining the group, further adding to the group's list of controversies and solidifying their cheap and inappropriate image. The members admitted that initially, they felt upset and overwhelmed by the huge influx of malicious comments, but they quickly had to learn how to embrace all the publicity. Besides, not all the attention was negative, there were some people who were actually rooting for the girls. And during their comeback showcase, these fans even created pink sausage light sticks as a sign of support. The song also went viral in China, allegedly gaining a combined total of 160 million views across various Chinese social media sites. Because of this, the group were able to tour the country for two months and perform in over 45 different cities. And they even managed to book their first commercial later that year as models for a Chinese mobile game. Clearly, this comeback had been a success in a roundabout sort of way. But six Bob knew that if they wanted to maintain their newfound notoriety, then they would have to take things even further for their next comeback. The next time we would hear from Six Bomb again would be in early 2017. By this point, the lineup had changed once again, with members Yu Chung and Han Bit being replaced with Gabin and Sylvie, and it was announced that the group would be making a return with quote, another shocking concept. However, netizens were skeptical that Six Bomb could top their previous antics. After all, what could be more shocking than the sausage suit concept? Well, netizens were in for a shock when on the 8th of February, the group returned with their pre-release track titled Getting Prettier Before. The music video showed the girls removing their makeup and getting facials before heading to what looked like a plastic surgery clinic to receive professional consultations. The teaser photos and album cover also showcased the girls wrapped in bandages, leading to speculations that the girls would be receiving plastic surgery as the concept for their comeback. These rumors were finally confirmed by the company in March when it was announced that the group would be releasing the song Get prettier after as your title track. The comeback would supposedly showcase the girls' transformations after getting a combined total of 100 million won worth of plastic surgery. The exact list of each member's cosmetic procedures was never revealed, but the agency stated that the women had, quote, every kind of surgery that could be done to the face. A 30 second long teaser video was also released showing the members wrapped in bandages as they danced to some of the key choreography for their upcoming song. Needless to say, this was by far one of the most outrageous concepts to ever exist in K-pop. Netizens were in disbelief that there were actually idols out there who were willing to go through permanent life-changing procedures just for a comeback. And the story made headline news across the world. Some articles portrayed Six Bomb as a struggling girl group desperate to make it in the competitive K-pop industry, while other articles discussed how Six Bomb's concept was a tragic consequence of the strict Korean beauty standards. But as much as everyone seemed to agree that the concept was both problematic and disturbing, people also couldn't help but be a little bit intrigued about how the surgeries would turn out. How will the members look afterwards? How big will the transformations be? What does 100 million won of plastic surgery look like? Well, all these questions would finally be answered on the 16th of March, when Getting Prettier After was finally released. The music video starts off with the members marching into the operating theater in their notorious sausage suits, before finally revealing the highly anticipated results of their plastic surgeries. And the transformations were, well, lackluster to say the least. 
Considering all the money that had been spent and all the hype that had been built up around the surgeries, everyone obviously expected the members to look drastically different. Yet, people felt like the members basically still looked the same. Viewers were quick to point out that any changes to the members' appearances could mostly be attributed to the makeup and styling rather than the surgeries themselves. And speculations even began to arise that the entire plastic surgery concept may have all been a hoax. Now that I think about it, I don't think the company would even have 100 million won available. One person commented, Isn't it suspicious that the company never actually revealed what surgeries each member got? Another question, In response to the mounting suspicions, an upscale plastic surgery clinic by the name of Wanjin Beauty Medical Group confirmed that the members had indeed received various procedures at their clinic, and they revealed that they had actually subsidized half of the cost in exchange for using Six Bomb as their promotional models. Six Bomb and their company also did several interviews where they opened up more about the specific surgeries that each member received. Diane told reporters that she had gotten breast implants and shaved down her cheekbones to make her face look smaller, while Soa received chin fillers and double eyelid surgery. It was also revealed that all in all, Soa, Diane, and Gabin's surgeries made up 95 million won of the total cost, while Sobi only got a nose job, which made up the remaining 5 5 million won. So overall, it appears that the surgeries did actually happen. And you know, high quality plastic surgery is supposed to look natural and enhance your features, not change them completely. So the fact that the members still look so recognizable should have been a good thing. I mean, it's technically a sign of good plastic surgery, right? But the tragic thing is, because Six Bomb had relied on controversy and noise marketing for so long, people were were, in a way, a lot more interested in seeing a shocking or bad transformation rather than a good one. Viewers were probably expecting the members to come out looking like Ollie London or something, and so their subtle, natural-looking plastic surgeries just didn't cut it. And that's the thing about these types of controversial groups. At some point, people start seeing you as more of a train wreck than an actual human being. Your well-being no longer matters because people only care about the shock factor that you bring. And well, Six Bomb had failed to deliver. After the disappointment of the Getting Prettier comeback, hype for Six Bomb quickly died down. The entire stunt was deemed a failed gimmick, and many people commented that the 100 million won would have been better spent improving the group's production quality instead. So Six Bomb decided to heed Netizen's advice and take themselves more seriously as artists. Sylvie and Gavin left the group and were replaced by Saul, a talented singer who had once made it to the top 10 in Superstar K. Throughout the rest of 2017, the group released several ballads, including In the Moonlight, and Beautiful Life. These ballads were not only a step up composition and quality wise, they also showcased the members' beautiful vocals. These songs were technically what viewers had been asking for this entire time. Yet the moment they were actually released, people didn't seem to be interested, and the songs barely received any attention. Then in July of 2018, the group made what seemed like a last-ditch effort to regain the public's attention with the song Hiccup Hiccup. The music video was supposed to be a parody of Japanese adult videos, complete with the disclaimers, the censored men, the interview sections, you know, common AV tropes. Not that I would know what they are. The music video was obviously deemed unsuitable for broadcast, and the song also faced a plagiarism controversy due to its similarities to Nicki Minaj's Pound the Alarm. But despite all of this, Hiccup Hiccup was still considered tame compared to Six Bomb's other comebacks, so it didn't really arouse much interest from the public. 
Finally, in November of 2018, Six Bomb released what would be their last song, an emotional ballad titled Your Neighborhood. But when this too failed to make any impact, the group seemingly gave up on K-pop and turned to the DJing and club scene instead. They joined a new company called World Event Agency, renamed the group to Red Bomb and later DJ Bomb, and began performing in clubs across Asia. Song left the group in September of 2019, and the remaining two members continued their DJing activities all the way up until mid-2021, when their contracts finally expired and DJ Bomb officially disbanded. Since then, Soa has done an interview where she explained that she could no longer DJ due to the shutdown of clubs during the pandemic, so she now works part-time at a grocery store. However, she hopes to reunite with her members and continue their DJing activities together someday. So who knows, perhaps we will see the re-emergence of Six Bomb soon. But at least for now, this seems to conclude the story of one of K-pop's most controversial and scandalous groups to ever exist. Thanks to their terrible songs and outrageous concepts, many people probably look back at Six Bomb today as somewhat of a vapid and talentless group, which is extremely unfortunate because this couldn't be further from the truth, and many of the members are actually super super talented. Navi, for instance, who was part of Six Bomb's debut lineup, actually joined The Voice Korea 2 in 2013, where she managed to make it into the top 28. <laughs> Da-in, who joined in 2015, is also a super stable vocalist. Meanwhile, Gabin, who joined in late 2016, is actually a professional dancer who has worked with some of the top K-pop artists such as Miss A and 2PM. And Saul, who joined in 2017, is, as I mentioned previously, an outstanding singer who managed to make it into the top 10 of Superstar K Season 1. These are all skilled individuals who joined Six Bomb thinking that they could, quote, shake the industry with their talents, only to then turn into the antithesis of everything they had hoped to become. Obviously, I understand that they did it out of necessity, and I guess you could say that the outrage marketing kind of worked for a while, but it's still tragic that that much talent had to be hidden behind sausage suits, bandages, and other ridiculous gimmicks. And all in all, I just think that Six Bomb is yet another example of the lengths some idols have to go to just to get noticed within the competitive and oversaturated K-pop industry. But anyways, those are my thoughts on the story. And on that note, honestly, YouTube is pretty competitive and oversaturated too. So I'm here wearing my sausage suit for you guys today. And I really hope I don't have to go any further than that to get you guys to subscribe. So please, if you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and bell icon. And I also have a Patreon where I upload music video reactions and research documents. So if that sounds interesting to you, then be sure to check it out. Last but not least, huge thanks to Exter for sponsoring today's video. And with all that said, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!